Behind me here is Leica's MS60 Total Station, and this is Apple's new iPhone 14 Pro. This is Apple's third generation LiDAR sensor. And today we're going to be analyzing the accuracy of this LiDAR sensor in comparison to a surveying total station. Now utilizing this LiDAR sensor, we're able to create large point clouds for mapping projects. And using Leica's MS60 Total Station, we'll be able to analyze the accuracy of the LiDAR sensor's point clouds that come out of the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, Apple also upgraded the accelerometer and gyroscope inside of this phone. The accelerometer is responsible for measuring the speed at which the phone is traveling, and the gyroscope measures the orientation of the phone. So if I rotate this phone from landscape to portrait, the gyroscope will be able to measure the angle at which I've rotated my phone and account for that while we're measuring data with our LiDAR sensor. Now, utilizing this Leica MS60 multi-station as our benchmark readings for our control points, and so I want to see what the relative accuracy is for a $1,000 cell phone with a built-in LiDAR sensor in comparison to professional grade survey equipment. Now I'm going to be using these two inch targets that I got off of Amazon. Link in the description if you want to check it out. What's nice about this target is the white sections have a reflective material and the black sections have a matte material. So it'll be very easy to pick up on the center of this target with a LiDAR scan. And I'm going to be setting them 10 feet apart along this sidewalk and we'll have a total of 10 control points. Now with the control points, we're going to use three of the control points to align the iPhone's point cloud data to the Leica MS60 total station data. So we'll start by aligning our first point on the point that the total station is set up on. Then the second point will be used to align our XY plane. And the 10th point along this line will be used to align the Z axis and rotation for the point cloud. All right, I'm gonna set the first point right here and I'm going to set it slightly closer to the edge of the sidewalk because this is where my total station is and I wanna put two of my legs on the grass just for more stability. There we go. All right, so the first point's here. The rest of the points will be towards the center of the sidewalk. So let's go and set the second point. Looks like we have a little friend here. Hi, how are you? Don't mind me, I'm just setting targets in your spot. All right, now I've set the targets for all of our control points. We're using 10 different control points over a stretch of about 90 to 100 feet. All right, now let's pull out the total station and set it up on the first point. All right, so I'm gonna pull out my legs and set them here on this first point. And in today's video, we're going to be using the Leica MS60. So this is Leica's multi-station. The Leica MS60 has a half second angular accuracy, which is one of the most accurate total stations that you can get on the market. So utilizing this total station, we're going to be getting the most accurate positions of these points. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and power on the total station. So with the Leica MS60, I wanna position it over the first target and in order to do that, there is a laser that is shot out from the bottom of this total station and it goes all the way down to the ground. So I'm gonna lift up these legs and make sure that I get this laser to be right in the center of this target. All right, there we go. And now I'm gonna step on the legs to fix this tripod to the ground. And I'll even step on this leg here on the asphalt because you never know if there's a little rock in the way. It's always good to step on all three of your legs. Now at the top of the screen, there is this physical bubble on the total station. By adjusting the legs of the tripod, we can move this bubble to be in the center. All right, now that the physical bubble is leveled, we're going to be looking at the screen. We can see a digital bubble here on the screen. Now the Leica Captivate software is gonna guide me on using the Tribrax screws in order to get this digital bubble right in the center. So as you can see, now I'm going to be using this little screw up top. I'm coming very, very close. I'm within 10 seconds. I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna get a little bit closer here. And just like that, we're under five seconds. So our total station is completely leveled. So it's important to ensure that the total station is still in the center of this target. So we can see the laser is right there in the center of this point. So we are looking good. Now that we've leveled the Leica total station, it's time to set up the project on our controller. All right, let's set up the project on the controller using the Leica Captivate software. So right here, I'm gonna to tap to create a new job. The name of this job, I'm just gonna call this iPhone 14 Pro LiDAR. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click store and it's going to create my project for me. 
And now I'm gonna come down here to setup. Under setup, I'm going to make sure that I have the set orientation option. Because I don't have a known back sight, I'm going to define the back sight along with setting the orientation all the way down on the last point. I say, okay. All right, and this job is iPhone 14 Pro LiDAR. My point ID for our setup, we are going to define the point at which the total station is set up on. So I will select this point. I'll create a new point. And when I look at my target, I have point T4901. So that's what I'm gonna put for my point ID, 4901. For my northern coordinate, I'm just going to assume a coordinate of 5,000. For the easting, I'm gonna assume a coordinate of 10,000. And for elevation, I'm going to assume 100. Now, all of our units will be in international feet. However, for our metric users, I will have everything converted for you at the end of the video. All right, everything looks good over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click store. Now we've created 0.4901, and that's the point that the total station is occupying, so I'll hit okay. For instrument height, the beautiful thing about the Leica MS60 is that I don't need to pull out a tape and measure the height of my instrument. Utilizing that laser plummet, the total station can measure the height of the instrument on its own. To do this, I am going to select the measure H, and I'm going to come down here to measure. And there we go, it's taken a measurement for the height of the instrument at 4.934 feet. I'll go ahead and select OK. And now we have the instrument height. Once all this looks good, I'm gonna select OK. And now it's gonna ask for backside information. So now we're going to pick up our rod and set up on the last point where our backside is. Okay, here we are on the last point. Set my rod right in the center of this target. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and set the orientation for our back sight. The first thing it needs is the back sight ID. This target that we're occupying is T4900, so I'm going to put that in as our point ID. 4900. Next, it asks for our target height. The target height is going to be the height of our rod, so I'm going to go ahead and raise this up to six feet. That way my head won't block it and the total station will continue to track the prism. So I'll set this at six feet. The direction angle is set to zero degrees. This is the azimuth reading between the first point and the last point. So this is going in a north like direction. So I'm going to keep it like that. And that's it. Now I'm going to get the total station to search and find this prism. I'll come up here and I will select this option and I'll have the total station power search to the left. All right, now the total station is locked up on this prism. I can go ahead and hit stop, and I'm going to set my angle. All right, now that we've established our baseline angle, we can start to collect data. I'm gonna come down here to measure. We can see the total station down here set up at 491, our back sight to point number 490. And now we can pick up our rod and start to measure every single one of these targets. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna set this rod up right here on point 4902. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pick up and go to the next point. This is 4903, and we will measure. Point stored. All right, point stored. Let's head to the next point. All right, 4904, measure. Point stored. All right, good. Let's head to the next point. Here we are, 4905, get leveled and measure. Point stored. Nice. All right, now we'll go to 4906. Leveled and measure. Point stored. All right, point stored. All right, we'll do 4907 and measure. Point stored. All right, point stored. Okay, 4908, measure. Point stored. Point stored. And last and final point, point 4909. Okay, and measure. Point stored. All right, that's it. We've now measured all of the points down the line using the Leica MS60 total station. All right, and I've got all of the points here with the total station being at the bottom and all the points that we've measured. This little orange circle is the prism and where we are right now. And if I hold this rod plumb, you can see that our angle is still at zero degrees, so we are looking good in terms of our orientation. All right, now let's start scanning data with our iPhone 14 Pro's LiDAR sensor. Now we're going to be utilizing an app called 3D Scanner app. You can check it out for free in the App Store or in the link in my description. So I'm going to open up 3D Scanner app, and you can see here a live view of what my cameras can see. Over on the right side where it says normal, I'm gonna open up this menu, and I'm going to select LiDAR Advanced. Under LiDAR Advanced, I can select the confidence level of my scan. This means I will have less points in my scan data. However, these will be very confidently positioned points, and so that's gonna give us more accuracy. Next menu is the range, and this will dictate how far away we want points to be collected. 
So as I start to increase my range, you can see more points will be collected in this range. And if I decrease it, then less points will be collected. I'm going to set this over to two meters. It's probably a good spot for where my phone is. Next is masking. If I'm trying to do 3D modeling work, like I'm scanning a person or an object, I can use masking. In this instance, I will not be doing that. So I will keep it set to none. And finally, the resolution. If I'm measuring larger objects like a building, then I could drop the resolution. And if I'm measuring something smaller like an apple, then I can have much more resolution. I'm gonna put this somewhere in the middle, probably 25 millimeters. All right, let's go ahead and start scanning. So I'm gonna start collecting data here. Okay, and I'm gonna move over to the second point. Very good. Here we are, the third point. This is the fourth point. Point number five, point number six, point number seven, point number eight, point number nine, and last but not least, point number 10. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and process a colorized tin. There we go, that looks fantastic. We can see each of these individual little targets. I can zoom in and see the actual centers. Very, very good. And now with this scan, I'm gonna go ahead and share it with myself. Now I want a point cloud file. I want high density and I'm gonna export a PTS file extension. All right, now that we've exported the point cloud, let's head over to our computer and analyze how accurate the iPhone 14 Pro's LiDAR sensor is. All right, I've got my iPhone 14 Pro right here and I've exported the LiDAR scan to my computer. I've also got my Leica controller right here and I'm gonna be exporting the data to this USB drive. All right, and the data has been exported, so I can pull this out, plug it into my computer. And now I'm going to be utilizing a software called Cloud Compare. Cloud Compare allows you to compare different types of data sets. So I'll be comparing the point cloud file that came out of the iPhone to the ASCII file that came out of the total station. All right, I've loaded up my point cloud file here. And as you can see, I have it imported in intensity mode. This is because LiDAR data cannot see color. Anytime you see a LiDAR scan that has color in it, it's utilizing a camera to LiDAR calibration to get it colorized point clouds. So there could be a little bit of error in that calibration. I want to completely avoid it and that's why we used those reflective targets so that we can get a different light intensity with the scan And if we look at the lidar scan here anywhere where there's a huge cluster of red points like right here is a location where there was a target. So in order to see this point cloud a little better, let's play around with the visualization of it so that we can identify the most intense points. If I click on the point cloud, I will come down here to the display parameters. And I'm just simply gonna move the dial here to make more of the points blue and leaving just the most intense points at red. See, now it's a lot easier to identify a cluster of red points, making identifying the center position of these points in the point cloud much, much easier. Now I've already aligned this point cloud like I explained earlier in the video, utilizing some of the points in the ground. This includes the point that the total station was set up on, the backsite point, as well as the second point that we used. Using three points will allow us to align the data in a 3D transformation in order to be on the same coordinate system as the total station. Now let's identify the coordinates for all of these targets in the point cloud and compare them to the coordinates in the total station. To the right here, I've just loaded up the coordinates of the total station. Now I'm gonna come over to cloud compare and I'm gonna select the point cloud and I'm gonna use the align tool again, but this time I'm not going to be aligning anything. I just want to see the differences in coordinates between all of the points. So I will select the tool and I'm gonna come down here all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna find the first point in which we set up our total station on. Okay, and then there it is, I'm gonna click it, it's right there. All right, perfect. And now if I press on this little pencil key, I can then add in the coordinates from our total station. So I'll press add, and there we go. And now I can go ahead and select the first point for X, next point Y, last point Z. Okay, here we go, our coordinates are now here. Let's zoom out, and let's head over to point number two. There's a cluster. It's gonna be right here. Point number two, I'll go ahead and add the coordinates. Easting, northing, elevation. Next point, point number three, right there. Easting, northing, elevation. Mm, quite a big difference there. Next point, it's like point number four, right there. And we have easting, northing, and elevation. Okay, next point right there. Select the center, easting, northing, and elevation, okay. Next point, looks like it's right here, right there. You got easting, northing, and elevation. All right, next point, right there. We have easting, northing, and elevation. There's the next one, right there. Easting, northing, and elevation. This is our last and final point. Easting, northing, and elevation. 
All right, now let's take a look at the differences between both data sets. Now for points 4900, 4901, and 4902, I'm not gonna be able to use an RMS error for these points because we use them for alignment. So starting with 4903, which is this point right here. And I've gone ahead and just transferred over all of the errors to the Excel sheet. So we just have one place to look. And if I look here, I've got errors that are between one tenth and even some spots being one or two hundredths. And for all my metric users, I've gone ahead and converted everything for you. So 12 hundredths of a foot is equivalent to less than four centimeters. And at this point right here, where we were only one hundredth of a foot, that was less than half a centimeter. So that means that the accelerometer and gyroscope are helping the iPhone's LiDAR's accuracy. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did be sure to subscribe to the youtube channel if you guys want to learn more about total stations then be sure to check out this video right here